Here's what I eat for lunch as a high fat five year carnivore and I eat this way to maintain my 30 pound fat loss, to keep my skin clear and to have zero brain fog and perfect poops smooth as butter. In the modern world, we like to have our bowl of cereal, don't we? This is a primal version of your bowl of cereal. I got my testicles in farm fresh milk from Liver King Ranch. The most feared warriors, the Maasai. My fiance took me out for date night and instead of ordering salad and eating with a fork, I ordered a dry aged tomahawk and ate with my hands. Because what's more feminine than that? I'm getting married. Our wedding will be at the most carnivore friendly city in the world to celebrate the benefits and sustainability of beef. I'm struggling. When people hate on me for being a threat to the public, spreading misinformation, and for promoting a cancer-causing diet, I look at myself in the mirror and realize that they're right. Every morning, I look at glowing skin, a flat tummy, bright eyes, while I brush thick strands of luscious hair, and I think, wow, I'm really not in a good spot, and it shows. Why would I ever want anyone to experience a bloat-free, inflammation-free life, free of cravings, mood swings, and food addiction? I'm honestly ashamed. And to all the naysayers, it is a shame that I have the mental clarity and energy to make these ridiculous posts every day, spreading this crazy message that literally saves lives. From The carnivore diet is a capitalism atrocity. All my YouTube videos related to this topic right now will be on the, the screen right now if you'd like to check them out. So let's get started into this YouTube video topic. I wanted to talk about the subject of the carnivore diet because I'm entirely sick of seeing pro-carnivore propaganda diet and dieting TikTokers on my For You page, such as the Steak and Butter Gal, or on Twitter, I always see the Liver King promoting un unhealthy, extremely unhealthy diets, all in the name of clout chasing and capitalism profits. So what exactly is the carnivore diet exactly? The carnivore diet is a big pharma sponsored diet. The diet as a whole is big pharma's and the meat industry's wet dream. On this diet, it consists of meat and dairy products such as raw milk and toxic red meat and other meat in general. No controlled studies support the claims that the carnivore diet can help eliminate health issues. It lacks beneficial nutrition, including fiber, plant, compounds like antioxidants there are so many health studies that prove this diet is toxic and here are some of the arguments against this toxic diet first off humans are not carnivores second first off who's going to have the most benefit from this toxic diet not you or your health but big pharma big food and the meat industry and the dairy industry overall are going to make the most money from this. The Personal Responsibility and Food Consumption Act, or better known as the Cheeseburger Bill, states that food producing or retailing corporations cannot be legally held responsible for obesity, heart disease, or other health-related issues caused by consumption of their food. It was introduced by Republican Congressman Rick Keller, who received the maximum amount of donations possible from companies, including McDonald's, Burger King, and Wendy's. Bills passed in the House and sought solely to protect the producer. The influence of food lobbyists also has the power to federal nutritional guidelines, which advise more meat consumption overall than what scientists advise people who make up this community receive money from these companies such as McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Mars, American Meat Institute, American Egg Board, National Livestock and Meat Board, National Dairy Council, the Sugar Association, Campbell's, Hershey's, Snack Food Association, Amer American Diabetes Association, takes money from Dannon, Kraft, Bumblebee Foods, and more. American Cancer Society takes money from Tyson, Pizza Hut, KFC, Taco Bell, American Heart Association takes money from Texas Beef Council, Tyson, Kentucky Beef Council, Idaho Beef Council, Nebraska Beef Council, Mars, Unilever, Domino's Pizza, Farmland, White Wave Foods, Dairy Max, ConAgra Foods, Subway, Purdue, Nestle, Kellogg's, Kraft, all these organizations take money from meat and dairy industries and companies that are associated with the cause of that disease. 
This is unfortunately the same with an env- environmental protection, you know, organizations. Almost none of them talk about how we can fight climate change by stopping eating meat. Look at the websites of large leading environmental organizations. Chances are that they are not talking about animal agriculture or factory farming. The cycle of big meat and big pharma are in together is fascinating. Millions of people eat food from big meat, which in turn makes them sick slowly over time, which benefits big pharma. They develop chronic diseases, which is where the money lies. Healthy and dead people don't bring in big pharma money. People who have to take pills all their lives bring in big pharma, big money. Pills only alleviate symptoms while creating other symptoms without resolving the root cause of all the symptoms and bad health. Big pharma and big meat get their monetary benefits from people being sick. In the United States, treating chronic diseases is a $1.5 trillion industry. Would big pharma or big meat want to eliminate this? Neither wins from people being healthy. Pharmaceutical industry giants spends more money on law bidding than any other industry, $238 million. Health organizations mentioned above take money from people who make money of us being sick for the rest of our lives. It's a clear conflict of interest. Like, they take large amounts of money, and money wins. The American Cancer Society takes money from Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson. Abbott, American Diabetes Association, takes money from Pfizer, Lilly, Johnson & Johnson. And the American Heart Association takes money from Pfizer, Lilly, and Bayer and much more pharmaceutical industry and companies. One of the worst things we can eat for our health is processed meat. Any meat that is cured, salted, smoked, fermented, dried, or canned is processed. Bacon, ham, sausages, burgers, salami, liverwurst, nuggets, ground beef, hamburgers or cheeseburgers are all examples of processed meat. Rule of thumb should be to not eat any processed meat. The World Health Organization classifies processed meat as a group 1 carcinogen. This includes meat producers such as hot dogs, I mean meat products, sorry, meat products such as hot dogs, bacon, deli meats, and beef jerky. The World Health Organization has determined that processed meat is a major contributor to cancer overall, especially colorectal cancer and consumption of processed meat might increase the risk of pancreatic cancer, increase risk of bladder cancer. A study published by the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center found that a reoccurring consumption of well-done or burnt pork increases the risk of bladder cancer. When pork is cooked at high temperatures, it increases hydrocladic armines, which can cause cancer. The study, which spanned 12 years, found the group with the highest meat consumption were 50% more likely to develop bladder cancer, increased risk of colorectal cancer, according to the World Health Organization and the International Agency for Research. The consumption of processed meat, such as bacon, ham, hot dogs, and sausages, increases the risk of colorectal cancer. Every 50 grams, 1.8 1.8 ounces of processed meat consumed increases this risk by 18%. Meat can also carry parasites in the meat, including some such as uh, tapeworm, roundworm, kidneyworm, stomachworm. These parasites are often difficult to kill and even during cooking and can cause serious health issues in humans overall. Like in seafood, there's like so many like seafoods that, you know... Like, for example, like, like non-cooked, like, raw oysters can cause, like, a lot of, like, health, like, effects and stuff. Like, seafood in general is so bad for your health. And a lot of these, like, so-called carnivore, you know, diet people eat, like, raw meat and stuff. You know, and it's just bad for your health. And they also snack on sticks of butter has become a very, very popular trend among some of these TikTok creators that are following the carnivore diet. The dairy industry is toxic and a long-standing con and scam. 
we don't need milk. Most of the world is lactose intolerant. And like many other things in America, we were conned, defrauded, and scammed into believing otherwise. The United States Department of Agriculture, an organization largely in charge of our country's nutritional guidelines, recommends consuming three servings of dairy every single day. Americans every day are encouraged to consume milk by lobbying groups of the American Dairy Association, doctors, teachers, parents, and peers, all in the name of health. This is occurring in a country where 30 to 50 million people are lactose intolerant and unable to digest the sugar found in dairy milk and other dairy products. This includes 90% of all Asian Americans and 75% of all African Americans and Indigenous Americans. More often than not, we are told dairy is our best source of calcium by lobbying groups, and they had no trouble convincing us that our that our bones, you know, need the dairy calcium. However, studies have shown that consuming large amounts of dairy products gives you a higher risk of bone fracture and mortality. Osteoporosis, or the weakening of bones, is the cause of about 2 million fractures every single year. High milk consumption also contributes to heart disease, high cholesterol levels, prostate cancer, cholesterol, and high saturated fat. There are many other sources of calcium we can intake from leafy greens, fruits, beans, and peas, nuts, whole grains, and sunlight. Also, promoting drinking milk promotes animal abuse and child abuse. With every pound the horse gains, the pain gets worse. We find pregnant mares every time. Some arrive pregnant. Others are mounted by stallions in the pens. The slaughter of pregnant mares seems to be an accepted fact. The pens are not suitable for foals. During winter, we find them frozen to the ground. During summer, we see them sick in the dust. Dr. Kramer is concerned about the feed. It's used primarily to fatten the horses. The feed troughs are filled mainly with alfalfa. Alfalfa is rich in protein and is fed to horses that are used for sport or are malnourished. Using alfalfa for fattening endangers the health of horses and puts stress on their kidneys and livers. Potential consequences include a weakened immune system, eczema, allergies, diarrhea and swollen legs. The consequences of overfeeding can be seen everywhere. The horses shown are massively overweight. Excess feed overburdens their sensitive metabolisms and can cause life-threatening illnesses, primarily laminitis and equine metabolic syndrome, or EMS. Laminitis is a very painful inflammation which requires treatment. EMS is a disorder of the fat and insulin metabolism. It causes reluctance to move, apathy, changes to the coat, and an increased risk of infection. Large, heavy draft horses. Nearly all of them have pain in the legs. Over 2,200 pounds supported by sick hooves. Professor Kramer considers this generally problematic. The black stallion is suffering from severe pain and is extremely lame. He stops moving by suddenly lying down, probably to get relief from the burden. No medical help despite severe pain. Normally, phenylbutazone would be given to treat the pain. However, EU regulations do not allow this medication if the horse is destined for human consumption. The results are devastating. Horses are left to suffer for six months or more. The manager of the Bouvry feedlot is aware of the problem. Phenylbutazone isn't an option for horses going to slaughter. Their condition gets worse as they get heavier, but we can't treat them because of the EU program. Dairy is scary. During World War I, our government created a huge demand for canned and powdered milk to be sent to soldiers overseas. This demand decreased with the mad time left of the war. At its end, farmers invested so much time and money in the dairy pr production leaving America with a surplus of unwanted milk. The U.S. government was left with a need to buy back this unwanted milk and begin ridding it by pushing it to the public. The dairy industry thus began infiltrating our daily life. Dairy products began infiltrating schools, the medical field, and the government's dietary guidelines. 
Got Milk campaigns and other advertising campaigns spread rapidly. The dairy industry's influence on our daily lives and food choices have demonstrated how easily we have been led to being pawns of just another capitalistic endeavor for the government and other industries. USDA is not only in charge of our country's nutrition recommendations, but they are also in charge of a multi-billion dollar campaign for the promotion of milk. Milk lobbying has infiltrated the influence of politicians and organizations in order to protect the interests of dairy farmers and the dairy-generated wealth. In essence, since adults weren't buying milk, the government's solution was to force it onto children. To this day, children who participate in the National School Lunch Program, which offers free or low-cost lunches to students of low-income families, are required and forced to take a carton of milk and put it on a child's school lunch tray, leaving millions of kids a product that causes stomach pain or vomiting should not be an exclusive staple of our nutrition programs. Here is the problem. Milk is only one of most common food allergies in children under 16. One in three children also can't digest the lactose in milk. And not to mention that milk is wasted by the millions of gallons every single year in U.S. schools. If children are being forced to drink milk and they have lactose intolerant, then that's child abuse, period, because it causes unnecessary pain and misery to the child. Guys, raw milk is good for you. It's not going to kill you. Drink raw milk. Do you drink milk? Yes. Not only is raw unpasteurized milk so good for your health, all adults and kids should be eating more fatty meat and animal fats instead of refined sugars and processed carbs. Raw milk, also that the carnivore diet people on TikTok try to push, Raw milk can contain dangerous bacteria such as salmonella, E. coli, leading to severe food poisonings and hospital stays. And raw milk has been known to carry bird flu virus that's been found in raw milk from cows infected. And not only that, but milk in general has forever chemicals in it, are found in some milk products, including organic counter reports tested milk samples. I mean, Consumer Reports tested milk samples purchased in California and Virginia, including organic valley grass milk and non-organic products from 365 Whole Foods, Great Value, and Kirkland Signature. They found PFOS in the organic valley grass, grass milk product from Michigan. The highest levels of forever chemicals were 84 parts per trillion, PFOA in a sample of Kirtlick Signature Milk and 60 in a sample of 300, 365 whole food milk, both brought in California. Raw milk is bad because I watched Monsters Inside Me episode of the TV show that used to be on Animal Planet about a girl who got severe food poisoning because her parents fed her raw milk and they were highly uninformed about how toxic and bad raw milk was. This is Narwhal Mutta, the skin and blubber. This is whale meat. This is walrus, again, nice deep rich color. Uh, seal and the blubber, rich color again. Meat is just bad in general and still has massive risks when eating it, even if it's a staple diet in some indigenous cultures. You know, the science is still there. Toxins from meat consumption can bioaccumulate in people's bodies. Ancestral diet gone toxic and gone wrong. Hair close connection to the environment with their ancestral diet of marine mammals have left the Arctic's indigenous people vulnerable to the pollutants of modern day society. About 200 hazardous compounds which migrate from the industrialized regions has accumulated in ocean-dwelling animals and creatures have been detected in the inhabitants of the far north. The bodies of the Arctic people, particularly in Greenland, contain the highest human concentrations of industrial chemicals and pesticides found anywhere on Earth, levels so extreme that the breast milk and tissues of some Greenlanders could be classified as hazardous biohazardous waste. Nearly all in suit tested in Greenland and more than half in Canada have levels 
of PCBS and Mercury Exceeding International Health Guidelines perched atop a contaminated food chain, the inhabitants of the Arctic had become the industrialized world's lab rats, the involuntary subjects of an accidental human cause experiment demonstrating what can happen when a heaping brew of chemicals builds up in human bodies and bioaccumulate. Studies of infants in Greenland and the Antarctic Canada have been exposed in the womb and through breast milk suggest that chemicals are harming children. Babies suffer greatest, greater risk of infections because of their immune systems seem to be impaired and their brain development is altered and so is their memory skills. Scientists say that the immune suppression could be responsible, at least in part, for the Arctic's inordinate number of sick babies. They believe the ne neurological damage to newborns is similar to the harm done if mothers were to drink moderate amounts of alcohol while pregnant. The tragedy for the Insu is that they have few, if any, ways to protect themselves. Many Arctic natives say that abandoning their traditional foods would destroy a nearly 4,000-year-old society rooted in hunting and culture. In 1987, Dr. Eric, an ophthalmologist at Laval University in Quebec, Canada, was sur surveying contaminants in breast milk of mothers near the industrialized, heavily polluted Gulf of St. Lawrence, where he met a midwife from the Antarctic portion of Quebec province. She asked whether he wanted to gather milk samples from women there, and he soon got a phone call from the lab director after they got the milk. Something was wrong with the Arctic milk. The chemical concentrates were off the charts. The peaks overloaded the lab's equipment, running off the page. The technician thought the samples must have been tainted in transit. Upon checking more breast milk, the scientists soon realized the peaks were in fact accurate. The Arctic mothers in these regions had seven times more PCBs in their milk than mothers in Canada's biggest cities. He contacted the World Health Organization in Geneva, where an expert in chemical safety told him that the PCB levels were the highest he had ever seen. Those women, the expert said, should stop breastfeeding their babies. Nearly a generation has passed since the first vitals of breast milk arrived in the Quebec laboratory. The babies Diwali antagonized over are now over the age of 16 years old, about to pass their own children in the chemical load amassing in their bodies. In soup, by contrast, eat meat, I mean, eat much like a polar bear does, consuming the blubber and meat of fish eating whales, seals, walruses, and seabirds, four or five links up the marine food chain. Contaminants which bioaccumulate in the animal's body and fat magnify in concentration which each step up from plankton to people, in newborns, in biblical cord blood, and mother's breast milk, average PCB and mercury levels are 20 to 50 times higher in remote villages of Greenland than in urban areas of the United States or Europe, according to a 2003 report by the Arctic Monitoring and Assessment Program, a scientific cordium created by eight Arctic nations, including the United States. In far northern villages, such as Kwanan, where crustacean live, one of every six adults tested exceeds 200 parts per billion in mercury in the blood, a dose known to cause acute symptoms of mercury poisoning. According to a 2003 United Nations report, a year-round icy shield thicker than a mile in some places covers 85% of Greenland. The island has no trees, no grass, no fertile soil, which means no cows, no pigs, no chickens, no grains, no vegetables, no fruit orchards. In the remote parts of Greenland, such as in the village of Kotan, people eat marine mammals and seabirds 36 times a month on average, consuming about a pound of seal and whale meat each week. About one-third of their calories come from traditional food sources.